this red button whenever you're ready. Okay. Sports and physical education should be compulsory in schools grades K through 12 within the U.S. because of the numerous benefits it can have on developing children, both physically and mentally, by allowing for a sense of identity, building a community, and decreasing the risk for mental illnesses or other diseases. Research shows physical activities such as sports or gym class can provide psychological benefits, especially in young children who are still maturing. As stated in the psychological benefits of sports and physical activities, the release of endorphins can help reduce stress and improve immune systems. Endorphins are neurotransmitters that are produced in a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. Exercise increases the production of these endorphins, which allows a person to feel positive emotions like happiness. Additionally, Sports and rigorous activities can offer a distraction for stressful events, since they require higher levels of concentration, which would force an individual's energy to go towards exercise instead of other thoughts. Physical activity can also have an effect on a person's emotional well-being. It can affect someone's self-confidence, as well as reduce the risk of depression or other mental illnesses. A prime example of this is in taking college esports seriously. A college esport player was interviewed and said, I can be myself around these guys. I wear my jersey around, but before, I wouldn't. The day I got my varsity esports jersey, I wore it when I went to get food. While esports do not require the same energy that other sports do, it shows the sense of community and belonging that individuals can find within team sports. The interview showed that the college esports players not only improved their self confidence, but also gained a better self image while they participated in their chosen sports. Like I stated before, in addition to improving self confidence, movement throughout the day can boost a person's overall mood. Due to the increased production of endorphins, or due to the increased production of endorphins that occurs when a person exercises, research shows positive changes in the moods of those who move around versus those who stay sedentary. Increased levels of stress can lead to an increased risk of developing depression. Logically, if there is a reduction of stress through sports or physical activity, there will also be a reduction in the risk of developing depression. In Figure One, it shows how heightened levels of stress or anxiety can increase the plasma levels of corticosteroids also known as CRH, which is a stress hormone. By taking part in physical exercises, levels of CRH lower, which in part reduces the risk or the amount of stress and therefore risk of developing depression. Physical activity can occur in many forms, but the most common for children are sports, recess, or physical education, more commonly known as gym class. Even after looking at the benefits that can occur from participating in these forms of exercise, there's still some opposition to requiring them for children. Some believe it takes up time that should be used for academic subjects or requires funding that just may not be available for a school. Others believe that the activities played in gym and as well as in sports may reduce a child's interest in exercise, which could uh, prevent them from pursuing it as an adult. Furthermore, a study performed in Texas proved that the implemented gym program that attempted to improve middle schoolers' fitness and academic performance by requiring them to participate in PE every day was counterproductive. Annalisa Packham, who co-authored the study, pointed to bullying as a potential reason why. The unsupervised locker rooms, as well as the games played as a part of the gym class, created an opportunity for abuse by facilitating teasing or mocking of overweight or unathletic kids. Researchers concluded that the manner had the opposite effect and was detrimental due to the increase in discipline and decrease in attendance rates. These factors contribute to the overall deprioritization of PE, which has caused many schools to just cut the program altogether. In addition to these cuts, there has been a countrywide shift away from scheduled time of the day for kids to move around like recess. However, experts argue that eliminating that period of time is detrimental, since it removes the break from learning that many kids need. This unstructured active time allows for social interaction among peers, which helps to build relationships as well as improve cognitive skills like communication and problem solving. Recently, medical authorities like the American Academy of Pediatrics have recommended at least 60 minutes of daily physical activity in order to maintain a healthy lifestyle. However, many children fail to meet this daily requirement if schools do not provide the opportunity to move around within the school day. Without recess or gym class, kids suffer from extended sedentary periods and miss out on breaks that can ultimately strengthen their academic performance. This was exemplified in a study performed by Harvard that looked at the difference between a group of kids who participated in 30 minutes of physical activity in comparison to a group that watched TV for the same amount of time. The results showed that the kids who participated in 30 minutes of fitness activities cognitively outperform the group that did not. This evidence demonstrates that children respond faster and more accurately to cognitive tasks after completing an activity that requires them to move around. Despite the benefits that kids can receive from a gym class or sports, some still oppose it, and that's okay. Offering everyone the choice between participating in a sport or enrolling in a PE class 
ensures that positive attitudes towards exercise form for everyone. Implementing a program where kids can still gain a PE credit from sports would grant those who want the competitive nature of activities to engage in those, while providing a more laid-back environment for those who do not. However, it is important that schools encourage everyone to participate in some form, so that these lifelong skills develop when students are young and grow so they are not turned away from exercise in the future. Currently, there are several schools across the country that already have successful programs like this. An example of what one could look like includes three years of participating in two seasons of sports, two years of participating in three seasons of sports, or two years of participating in two seasons of sports, in addition to one quarter of a PE elective. Options like these or similar allow students to explore new activities or pursue sports they are passionate about, while still meeting the daily exercise requirements. Public health officials acknowledge the importance of staying active which is why requiring some form of movement within the school day for grades K through 12 would help students reach that recommended number of daily activity because it is already built into their schedule. Physical activity in any form can benefit children by providing a sense of identity, aiding psychological factors, and improving performance at school, which is why after reviewing the implications of making sports or a physical education class mandatory for every school, the U.S. needs to implement these changes in order to help create a healthier lifestyle for students while they are at school, as well as for the rest of their lives. And these are my references. I'll add a huge like sound <laughs> of applause. All right, a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> what evidence did you gather you didn't include, and why did you choose not to include it? So some of the information that I gathered at the beginning of my research was the difference between sports and a gym class. And so typically sports require more energy because they're more competitive, and the environments are just a little bit different. Um, most of that I figured was common information, and so I decided to include more relevant information about the in overall importance of including choice within a program like okay. this. Okay, thank you. Uh, what additional questions emerged from your research, and why are they important? So some of the additional questions that emerged from a conclusion like this would be how to raise the proper funding for a program like this if schools already lack adequate funding. And so just coming up with different ways, whether that be raising taxes in the community or coming up with proper fundraising activities um, in order to raise money to support a program like this. Okay, thank you. Another huge round of applause.